America in Another World by Ron the Black Cat Chapter 81 Part 1 Bombardment 1110 May 16, 2020 CE 0835 Sun 46, 196 A Outside the port city of Yalin, Elven Nation I guess we are sieging the city It was quiet there was no sound of artillery or bullets, only the sound of idling engines and men chatting away. Well, the orders are just to stay outside of the city. Doesn't say anything about a siege. We could be waiting for reinforcements. It doesn't seem that the elves want to advance. They are just holing up in there. We might as well leave them there if they aren't gonna attack us. It's gonna be a hassle if we don't do something about them since we will have to protect our logistics from possible attacks. Might as well as get rid of concentrated enemy units before they become a problem. Do we even know what's inside the city? Are there any elven soldiers? I haven't seen one since we began this invasion. Well, Intel has nothing. They are probably just a ragtag group of armed citizenry. Can we just start calling them terrorists? I don't see much of a difference at this point. They just seem to be Taliban with World War II weaponry and thoughts. Near Primopolis, Magus Imperium. After stepping off the plane and onto the airfield, Renault felt a sense of relief since he was finally back in his home country. A tent had been set up nearby and Magusian soldiers directed him and the rest of the people who have been rescued to it. A few minutes in a line, Renault entered the tent. A Magusian officer looked up full name and the place you are from. I'm Renaud Hewett. I'm from the village of Hallfeld. The Magusian officer looked back down onto his desk and started writing. That has been completely burned to the ground. You could try to return to rebuild it but I can't see how much one man can do. Do you have any relatives or friends that are willing to house you? Renault hesitated. I have a question about that. The Magusian officer didn't look up. Yes. I'm trying to find my parents and younger sister. They have been captured by the elves. Have they come through here? The officer opened a drawer in his desk and took out a book and opened it. We have a very short list of people who have been rescued. Can I have their names? Anna Hewett, Imelna Hewett, and Arthurus Hewett. After flipping through the book, the officer shook his head. Sorry. They aren't on the list. If you have nowhere to go, we are providing five days of free lodging at nearby hotels. Will all those who are rescued going to come through here? I'm not sure about that. As of right now, yes. All right. Thanks. There's a tent to the right. They will send you to the hotel and give you some more help. Walking out, Renaud saw a poster on the wall. On it was a soldier holding a rifle charging forward. Emblazoned on it below was your Imperium needs you. He thought about it. If he could go, he could try to save his parents and sister himself. He was scared to actually join. He had kept his head down when he was a slave to the elves and now he wants to go back there and fight them. He wondered if it was even reasonable since he had just gotten out of that hellhole. He was quite a lonely person and didn't make many friends because of his awkwardness. He also knew that the idea of going to save his family by himself was absurd. How long was it going to take to train him? Would his family have returned by the time he was sent to battle? Will he even be sent to the right area? The thoughts circled through his head. A few minutes after Renault's exit, Freire entered the tent. Full name and the place you are from. I'm Freire Gauvain. I'm an engineer at the Falk Aviation Company. I'm looking to return to the headquarters at Laufenburg. I meant the place that you live at, not the place you work at. I live at Laufenburg. The officer looked up. How were you captured by the elves? I was on vacation. Well, nothing happened at Laufenburg. It was far away from the fighting. Then, I would like to go there. I need to have an urgent meeting with my boss. Okay, we will provide you with a train ticket to the city. 1235 May 20th, 2020 CE, 0917 Sun 50th, 196 AE, Washington DC, the president looked at a satellite map of the elven nation, General Griffith briefed him on the current situation, other than their major cities, 
Everything on this side of the mountain range has been secured. The towns and villages have been much easier to deal with. We are laying siege to multiple cities. Mr. President, we will save more lives if we advance into the city instead of sieging it. Sieges will just lead to more suffering from both sides and the will of the elves are undeniably strong. They have already been there for four days. They may prefer starvation to surrender. The losses we will take from these battles will be too grave. President Hayes pondered quietly for a bit. All right, General, you have your wish. I'm authorizing the use of artillery and airstrikes on any groups of identified armed elves in the city. Pass that down the chain. Port city of Yalin. A woman carried a basket of fruits that was gathered from her master's small front yard garden. Right next to her master's house, a group of armed elves stood behind a makeshift barricade. The elves decided to set up defenses street by street to make the fight as bloody as possible. One of the elves eyed her as she went back into the house. She hurried into the house. After setting down the fruit basket, she looked around to make sure no one was home and went to the room that had been provided to her. It was a small room and the only thing provided was a ragged mat to sleep on. We will be saved soon. Emmeline looked at her daughter, Anna, in the room. Anna slept quietly. She was gaunt and was likely still hungry. They had been through unspeakable things but the end seemed to be drawing near. From what she has seen and heard, the city had been surrounded. 2200 May 20, 2020 CE, 0200 Sun 51st, 196 AE. Emmeline awoke to a whistling noise. The ground shook as explosions occurred outside. Chapter 81 Part 2, Bombardment. 2130 May 20, 2020 CE, 0145 Sun 51st, 196 AE. Outside the port city of Yalin. Our drones have found barricades set up throughout the city with armed elves manning them. A few of them even have elven children there. Are they armed? We observed them holding what seems to be guns. If they are armed, they are a threat. The streets aren't that wide so surrounding houses might be destroyed. We will have to take that chance then. Only target the barricades with armed elves or any area with a concentration of them. Understood, sir. M109A7 Paladins of the 2nd Battalion, 3rd Field Artillery Regiment raised their guns and fired in unison. Their shells went for different targets across the city. 2246 May 20, 2020 CE, 0223 Sun 51st, 196 A. Kastner Human Concentration Camp, Elven Nation. A soldier talked to a war correspondent observing the evacuation. They walked past a parked Abrams and a few of the crew hanging around. We are currently evacuating these Magasian civilians. This is the biggest concentration camp we believe that the elves have. About 10,000 Magasian civilians were held here. How many were saved? Around 9,500. Luckily, the elves just started executing prisoners when we rolled up. We caught them off guard by advancing at night. Most of the elves ran. The ones we have captured seem to be have been confused at the ongoing situation. I heard that there are multiple other concentration camps. What happened to those? The operation to free the prisoners started six days ago when special forces and army rangers secured multiple small and medium-sized concentration camps. Why was this camp not prioritized? Being this large in size and so densely packed, Sending in a small or medium force would have been unwise. The distance made any insertion via air impossible. We are literally next to the mountains that cut this entire country in half. This camp was a priority target though and ground troops got here as fast as possible. There should be a ton of elves crawling around in those mountains so we are getting these Magasian civilians out as fast as possible. Close by, an osprey took off. Is it okay if I questioned a few of the Magasians? Feel free to do so but they speak Latin. I can translate for you to a degree. The soldier went around asking those who were still waiting for a helicopter. Many responded with stories of how they were starved, forced to work, and shot for not working fast enough or collapsing. 
The war correspondent took multiple pictures of the interior and exterior of multiple buildings. The execution sites were also captured on camera. A picture of an Osprey's full of magazines was also taken and a few pictures of CH-53E Super Stallions and Osprey's lifting into the air. Port City of Yaline. Don't cry, we will be fine. Emmeline tried to soothe Anna. Explosions after explosions occurred and the ground shook violently. A deafening explosion occurred and the wall caved in. Abrams and Bradleys entered the city. The barricade at the outskirts of the city had already been destroyed by shots from the Abrams. Isaac followed his squad towards the city. Even with the artillery bombardments, the elves put up stiff resistance, and house-to-house -house fighting occurred. A few hours later, Isaac sat down on the street and leaned his head back. Jacob stood before him. We have secured half of the city. Only half? Sheesh. We have a much smaller force trying to take over a big city. Of course, we only secured half. Across the elven cities of the southern side of the mountains, similar fighting raged on. Nilflin, elven nation. A Sherman tank rolled down a street. Magasian infantry flanked it. Suddenly a rocket shot out and flew over the turret of the tank. Its .30 caliber machine guns opened up and the Magasian started shooting. 0301 May 21, 2020 CE. 0433 Sun 51, 196 AE. Galath Mountain Range, Elven Nation. Gerald talked to Scott over the comms. Seems like they haven't learned that their static defenses aren't gonna do shit in the end. Ha. Huh. The Magasian food is doing more damage to us than they are. Gerald snickered. I hope Hayden will be alright. We told him not to eat it. A squadron of F-15ES dropped loads of bombs onto the Galath mountain range. Anti-aircraft fire sprayed into the sky but nothing was hit. They just made the targets much more obvious. Elven Nation. One of the generals reported to Terran. My leader, the defenses outside of the base have been devastated by air attacks. It's fine we still have our troops inside the mountains. They will be protected. Anfa Len spoke up. My leader, I still suggest we disperse our troops. We have been setting up defensive positions after defensive positions and none of them are working. The Americans have the capability to destroy any sort of organized defense we throw at them. Anfa Len, when did you become a general? You are the head of intelligence. Not a person who makes military decisions. Isn't that right gentle elves? The general staff snickered and nodded. Anfa Len sat down in the chair of his new home. It was more of an apartment than a normal house. They are all fucking yesmen. An elf with short blonde hair and ears that pointed a bit upwards looked out from the kitchen. Anfa Len, it's your first time home. You should think of something other than work. Well, we can't really call this home. Can we? I know. I know. But we have to make do. Anfa Len laughed and continued on with his previous thought. When haven't they been yesmen? It's just gotten worse. Sialen, maybe I should do something. Anfalen, I know your work is important but don't stress yourself out too much. Tonight, we are having some petron fish cooked with salt nut sauce. Anfalen stood up. It's a good thing this place has a large stock of food. I do prefer the fresh stuff though. Chapter 82, Internal Affairs. 0955 May 23rd. 2020 CE, Washington, D.C. President Hayes read the report as the Curlson explained it to him. Most of the resistant towns and smaller cities have surrendered. From these recent battles, we have only suffered 47 casualties. The total so far for the entire war is only 263 casualties. Isn't that a bit grim compared to the figures from the Iraq War? Well compared to the Iraq War, we didn't face an army that was nearly 5 million strong and a fanatical populace. Casualties will still mount though as we start battling our way through their larger cities. Pentagon, United States of America. General Griffith poured whiskey into his lowball glass. The ice inside plinked around. He looked outside the window of his office. I want those reports to be erased or changed. Understood. The president doesn't need to know about them. It's fine if one or two reports slip through. 
As long as the actual figures don't get to him, it will be fine. With this, I will get to keep my job. Hack, maybe I will even get recognized for what I did. And you will keep your job too. A man stood near the closed door. I'm not too sure about this, General. Quincy took a sip out of his whiskey. Who do you think got you this job, Charles? I can get you fired from it with just a single phone call. Just follow this and you will keep your job. Charles swallowed and stayed where he was. Quincy gave a sigh and put his glass down on his desk. We have no obligation to protect people from other countries. In fact, fuck them. That shit of a president thinks it's our duty to save foreigners who don't even give a damn about our country. Continuing the war in the Middle East and for what? To help rebuild countries? We should have just bombed them back to the Stone Age and left. I have seen good men die out there fighting for people who aren't American. Quincy's voice started to develop a tone of hatred. And in the end, the world still blames us. If they aren't American, there's no need to help them. Our job, our duty, is to protect our fellow Americans. And only that. Well sadly, in our previous world we couldn't do that because of a stupid convention. Do you know how many of my buddies, my men died because of that? This world is a dream. No international community to watch us. No rules to follow. The foreigners are nothing more than idiots, animals, or barbarians. Think about it. A eccentric world with nobody to question what we do. We can destroy any foreign country that dares not listen to us. Hiding what we do from the domestic media isn't that hard in this world. And now that idiotic president is thinking about transparency and a rule book to restrict us like the Geneva Convention. Maybe I should run for president. We will be so much better off. Charles felt a bit shocked by the general's rant. But. Quincy cut him off. I know you have been struggling recently. You have your wife and your kids. Once you finish this, maybe there's even something in line for you. Maybe a promotion of sorts with a good raise in salary. And also isn't your daughter suffering from cancer? I can get her the best doctor there is. Paid by me. Understood, General. Most of the civilian casualties are from elven executions. Our artillery and airstrikes have caused minimal civilian casualties. Ronell nodded at Quincy's words. Maybe you were right, Quincy. I'm not a military man. The current situation seems better than the past. Mr. President, war is not a clean thing. You have to take risks. Your idea to restrict our airstrikes and artillery strikes until the target was confirmed and the chance of collateral damage was completely gone made us lose many men. I sympathize with the fact that you want to help the innocent, but sometimes you just can't do that. 1030 May 23, 2020 CE. 0815 Sun 23rd. 196 A. Galath Mountain Range. A C-130 Hercules flew toward the mountain range. The navigator spoke on comms. This should be the biggest entrance to the cave and tunnel system that the elves have in the mountain. The back door of the C-130 opened and a Moab slid out and dropped onto the side of the mountain. A small mushroom cloud rose into the sky. The open-air entrance to the base was very large so that it could allow Magi Panzers and aircraft to fit in. Usually, the front entrance would have a few elves milling around and a couple of aircraft being serviced. But because of the recent bombings, everything was moved further into the cave and closer to the part that was dug out. The elf engineers doing maintenance to the aircraft felt the ground rumble. They looked out of the cave just as they were thrown in a blast. The overpressure from the Moab created shockwaves that reverberated into the cave and through the tunnels carved out by the elves. Because it was not reinforced, many parts of the cave collapsed. The initial blast killed those at the entrance and destroyed the vehicles stored there. Thousands of elves died from the shockwaves. Hundreds more were trapped in the mountain. The mop, which was meant to destroy bunkers by going through the roofs and floors of a reinforced structure was not suited for destroying a massive tunnel system that was carved into the side of a mountain. Era looked up into the sky and saw a mass of white rising into the sky. She had seen a single plane that had four propellers drop a large bomb onto the mountain. When the bombings began, 
She was sheltered at a smaller cave system along with others so she was able to survive. Elven Nation We have lost all communications with the soldiers in the mountain's main base. We have received reports from nearby soldiers that a large explosion occurred. It is highly possible that the main base has been wiped out. In the hallway, loud yelling came from Terran's room. It went on for a few minutes before stopping and an eerie silence fell. Anphalen rushed into the room. See Halen. We need to leave. We aren't safe here. See Halen looked bewildered. Where are we going? What's happening? You know where my parents live right? Their village? Go there. I already have a driver arranged to do that. Pack. They walked out of the enormous base. Two cars were waiting outside. See Halen stopped. Anphalen, why are there two cars? Anphalen sighed. I'm not going with you. Why? I'm going to find a way to stop this madness. Anphalen stopped her from saying more. I will be fine. Anphalen nodded at the elf standing next to the driver's door of the first car. Veston, you are one of my most trusted officers and our close friend. Keep her safe. Veston gave a small smile. Will do, sir. Come on SAE. See Halen hesitated. Vess, but... Anphalen urged her. Leave? Go? I will return to your side as soon as possible. If the Americans come to your village, do not resist. Anphalen watched as C. Halen got into the car. He had thought long and hard about this. Killing Terran would accomplish nothing. Someone else would take over and the entire mess would continue. If he tried to take over, he will just be killed for treason. He needed another way and he now was taking a gamble. It was the most reasonable out of the three he had thought of. He hoped C. Halen will be safe. Terran was handicapped at this point. He neither has the time nor the resources to waste to try to kill his parents or his wife. Anphalen turned towards his second in command, Athtar Oladin. Let's go. Terran gave out orders in the general staff room. Order all units to withdraw from the mountains. Disperse into the forest. Where's Anphalen? Get Anphalen. I need to talk to him. Terran brows creased. He loathed to admit it but Anphalen was right. A few minutes later, a soldier saluted him. Hail Van Harris? We were unable to find him and his wife was not at the living quarters. Okay, then search around the compound. A few hours later, it was clear that Anphalen was gone. Two cars had disappeared from the vehicle storage and Terran along with his wife and two intelligence officers were gone. After hearing this in his office, Terran gritted his teeth before shouting and slamming his fist onto his desk. Anphalen? 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 On the road to the Galath Mountains. Athtar, in the driver's seat, spoke up to Anphalen who was beside him. I see things coming down the mountain. Seem to be our soldiers. Find a different route. We need to get to the other side of the mountain without being caught. You know, Anphalen, this entire thing feels like a stupid idea. Well, it's only one I can think of at this point. Chapter 83, Dying Down, 0044 May 24, 2020 CE, 0322 Sun 24, 196 AE. Miles from the Galath Mountain Range, Elven Nation. Surrounded by trees, Era sat down on a flat rock while rubbing her forehead. Beside her was her night tank. She was glad that she had filled it up during their stay in the mountains. A few beleaguered elven soldiers milled around. Among them, one soldier came up to her and saluted. She didn't know his unit nor his name but he had patches that indicated that he was a lieutenant. He was most likely the highest rank soldier here other than her. Major General, quite a few of our elves are missing. We have witnesses that say they have deserted. Okay. The lieutenant looked at Era curiously. Shouldn't we give out orders to shoot anyone who deserts and to find those who deserted? We don't have time to care about deserters and we aren't going to shoot them. I don't even know which units these men are all from. I know which unit they are from. I gathered them. Major General, it is your duty to command us. Era sighed. The deserters are just following orders. The lieutenant blinked. Um, Major General. I don't think the orders were to give up. They are dispersing. The orders were to disperse. 
That's what they are doing. I'm not even their actual commanding officer. They just joined up with us when we fled the mountains. In fact, some of these deserters could be trying to find their own units or their commanding officers. Era sighed again after he left. She really wished that she could also desert. Ugh, this is a mess. A few minutes later. We are running low on food and we have nowhere to be resupplied. Era shook her head. High command is giving no help to us. Every time I ask for supplies and such, they only told me to follow the order to disperse. Seems like we will have to fend for ourselves. The lieutenant nodded. Major General, should we take a position in one of the nearby towns? They have food and probably fuel. That's actually not a bad idea. The Americans haven't gotten to this side of the mountains yet. Era stood up. Elves, move out, we are getting resupplied. 0120 May 24, 2020 CE. MacDill Air Force Base, Tampa, Florida. General Thompson looked over the sitrap. Huh, they abandoned the mountains. That's incredibly stupid of them but incredibly lucky for us. One of his staff nodded. I guess they got scared of the Moab we dropped on them. Well, we only have 14 more of them so thank God for that. It would be a repeat of Iwo Jima if they continued staying in those mountains. 0133 May 24, 2020 CE. 0346 Sun 24, 196 AE. Somewhere in the Elven Nation. Under the blazing sun, a platoon of M1A2 Abrams sat in the middle of the plains. Captain Rose sat on the commander's hatch of his Abrams and studied the wide open plains. A voice came over the comms. When the hell is the fuel going to come? The front line is already way ahead of us. This is Pratarian. They did say that they did have fuel trucks coming towards us. I won't be surprised if the shipment is lost somewhere in the Magasian Empire. It's so fucking hot here. At least let us find a few trees to sit under the shade. We still have fuel. Yes, we can definitely still move, but we are trying to conserve fuel here just in case anything happens. We are in the middle of buttfuck nowhere, miles behind the front line. I don't expect some idiotic elf to attack us. On the road, a group of Humvees passed them. The soldiers on the Humvees were laughing. One of the tankers who was sitting beside his Abrams gave them a middle finger and shouted oh, fuck you. Skies over elven territory. Leaflets spewed out of an F-15A that was cruising over the skies of the elven nation. All cities west of your mountain range have fallen. Those that have surrendered are being treated humanely. We mean no harm to the elves of the elven nation. We only seek those responsible for initiating this war. On the back of the leaflet was a map of the elven nation. One side of the elven nation was colored blue and had the American and Magasian flag on it. On the other side was colored gray with the elven flag on it. Multiple blue arrows pointed towards the gray area. Outskirts of Faluna, elven nation. The sound of M777A2S firing rumbled across the plains. The firing had been going on for a few days, starting every time a target was marked. U.S. troops have also advanced slowly into the city. Ovigrith, Elven Nation. Finn walked down the street. There were a few bodies lying on the street. Fucking hell. These elves did a number on these Magasians. A burned-out Sherman sat right in the middle. A few miles away, an Magasian officer greeted the commander of the 2nd Battalion, 2nd Marines. The elves have been stubbornly defending this city. Our Shermans have helped make some progress but we have been stopped by their anti-tank weaponry. If I'm hearing it correctly, the current situation is a stalemate then. Near the Galath mountain ranges, Elven Nation. A few U.S. soldiers, from the 2nd Battalion, 22nd Infantry Regiment of the 10th Mountain Division, stood around relaxingly at a checkpoint. A car appeared from the horizon. One of the soldiers noticed it and his eyes widened in disbelief. We will be trying to stop it. Be careful, the elves haven't done this yet but it could be a suicide bomber. What the hell? Why the hell is there a car here? Get into positions. The soldiers raised their M4S towards the car. The car soon came to a halt and two elves stepped out with their hands up. Ten minutes later. Washington, D.C. 
The phone next to Ronel's bed started to ring. Ugh, what time is it? Ronel picked up the phone. One of them is claiming to be the head of their intelligence agency. He seems to want to negotiate with us. Huh, a defector? That's unexpected. A few miles from the Galath mountain range, an American soldier stood by the entrance and kept an eye on Anfalen as he sat down. I'm Anfalen Inaniaros. Head. I guess now former head of the Elven Intelligence Agency, a soldier sitting on the opposite side of the table greeted him. Nice to meet you, Mr. Inania Rose. I'm Colonel Brian Trujillo, commander of the 1st Infantry Brigade Combat Team of the 10th Mountain Division of the United States Army. I will be acting as a temporary representative of the government of the United States. Although we are unable to confirm your identity, we are interested in what you want to say. Do understand that the soldier by the door is there as a precaution. I know that you Americans have capabilities beyond my wildest dreams. My agency has gathered a lot about your country. From your planes that are faster than the speed of sound, your helicopters, and your weapons that can attack out of sight. You also come from another world don't you? Brian smiled. Well, you do seem to know more than the average elven soldier. Go ahead. You know who our leader is correct. I presume you are talking about Terran Van Harris. Anfalen nodded. I am was a very close aide to him. In recent times, he has become more and more delusional. He started threatening me whenever I gave suggestions. I couldn't take it anymore. I knew that we weren't going to win and Terran will be forsaking the entire elven race if he continued. And how does this lead to you defecting to us? I believe that there are elves just like me. Tired of the war and tired of this fanaticism. There are elves like you, especially, from your country's rural areas. But how do you expect to drum up support? I don't suspect that you are well known, are you? I'm not, but I know I will have support. Like you said, in the rural areas, elves are less supportive of Terran. It's because our propaganda has targeted the urban elves more than the rural ones. Now, Elves in places that you have occupied are more willing to show their distaste for the current elven government. They won't be in hiding anymore. I'm hoping to gather elves like these to form a new elven government. It is better than you humans taking over. Not many elves will accept that. I won't be surprised if a resistance movement forms because of that. Brian set his eyes on Anfalan. But what if the elves see you as a puppet government? Well, they won't because only elves are in the government. If humans were in the government, then the elves will see it as a puppet government. Having an elf-only government doesn't guarantee that a resistance movement doesn't form against you. Anfalen grew quiet. Um. Brian chuckled. I may have questioned you too much there. Well, the end decision isn't up to me. We will let you meet an actual diplomat soon to sort this out. Brian paused. Here is a serious question. Do you know where your leader currently is? I know Terran's hideout. I will be willing to give you this information if your government agrees to what I'm proposing. 082, May 24, 2020 CE, Washington, D.C. President Hayes swept his eyes across the members of the committee. The issue with the underwater sea monsters is becoming quite a nuisance. Secretary of Homeland Security Lenny Clark started speaking. We have had a recent uptick in ships being mysteriously sunk with holes on the bottom. The Coast Guard is currently investigating but hasn't come up with much. However, a team of scientists we have gathered has come up with some information. Dr. Levi Munoz is here to talk about what his team has learned so far. Levi stood. Ahem. Mr. President. We believe that it is a creature most likely native to only this part of the world, just like how the phoenixes were. However, they are fewer in numbers and should not be able to cause much damage. As long as we avoid the areas where it is mostly found, we can minimize the damage. My team has been creating a map to show where they are commonly found. Here's a map of the result. Lenny nodded. We will need to find a way to track them and then find a way to exterminate them. The Coast Guard is cooperating with the Navy in order to use their MH-60Rs to try to detect the sea monsters. We are not sure about the environmental impact of exterminating such creatures. We should tread carefully. 
Chapter 84, Those Above. 0930 May 24, 2020 CE. 0745 Sun 24, 196 AE. Galath Mountain Range. Jacob sat on a rock that was beside the cave. Not an elf in sight. He took a sip out of his canteen. Isaac looked into the cave. The caves might have some. Pretty sure they have been cleared out. We will be over this mountain in no time. Would be nice if the elves gave up. The way they are fighting. Jacob shook his head. No chance. Creech Air Force Base, Nevada, United States. A sensor operator looked closely at his screen. We have a single large heavy tank on the road. The mission coordinator looked over his shoulder. Whoa, that's a big one. Permissions to fire. Granted. Skies above elven territory. AMQ-9 Reaper cruised over a long road that led to the mountain. A Hellfire missile shot out and a large explosion rocked the road. Elven Nation. My leader? The Titan Magipanzer had just been found destroyed. A loud, angry yell came from Terran's office followed by the noise of shooting. Terran came out of the office. My leader, what? The guard stopped as he saw that Terran was holding a pistol and was fuming. Drag him out? I'm going to my quarters. Don't disturb me for the next few hours. Terran waved his pistol at his aide behind him. The aide laid slumped by a wall that was covered in blood. Terran started muttering under his breath and walked away. Inira watched a screen when she heard an angry yell resound. Elder sister? Sister? What is the meaning of this? What is it, Odaldur? A red-faced young-looking man, Odaldur appeared in front of Inira holding a screen. This. The night skyline of San Francisco and the Golden Gate Bridge was seen from the ocean on the screen. Inira gave a glance. Oh, that? You told me that I could summon anything I wanted to help me in your challenge. When I said summon anything I thought you would do something like a hero that uncle did for his world. Not, whatever this is. Odaldur. I don't understand why you have to be this cruel. Can't you retract this challenge? The redness of Odaldur's face started to fade. A smirk grew on his face. What? It's fun. I killed everything in mines so it got boring. Ha. Huh. Whatever, from the looks of it, you didn't summon anything special if you are still worried. I hope you watch as I destroy everything you loved. Bye. Odaldur's smirk widened and his eyes held a tint of wildness as he disappeared. Inura sighed and shook her head. How did he share the same parents as me? He just had one of those mood swings again. I really wish mother and father will be back soon. One thousand years ago. Odaldur watched from a floating screen as a human wearing chain-link armor ran from a group of huge, gray dog-like monsters. He laughed as tears flowed down the human's face. It wasn't long before the monsters caught up and tore the human apart. When Odaldur giggling stopped, he took a deep breath. And that should be the last one. Hmm, that's surprising, being base creatures, they survived the longest. He looked around his world. Many types of jet black and red creatures were everywhere. The land was a tan color devoid of vegetation. Ruins of civilization could be seen everywhere. Hmm, it kinda feels boring now, there's nothing to kill anywhere. 500 years ago, Inura happily watched as a group of humans built a home brick by brick. Their architecture has gotten really good. Because of how little interaction the gods and goddesses have with each other. They are prone to talking to themselves. Old daughter popped up. Elder sis. Inura didn't like at her younger brother. What is it, old daughter? I'm bored? Don't you have a world to manage? Oh, I killed everything on it. Inura swished her head towards old daughter you what? Old daughter smiled. What? Mom and dad have only been gone on vacation for 5,000 years and you already killed everything in your world. Yeah. I got bored and made some demons, hey sis, is that your world? Yes, what about it? Can I join? No, old daughter pouted. Ave, hey, come on. Then how about I challenge you? My world is perfectly fine. I don't want a challenge. Old daughter giggled. It will be fun. I will get to kill everything on your world. Old daughter, mom and dad will be really angry once they 
they are gonna be gone for another 5,000 years. I give you 500 years before my demons invade your world. Also you are allowed to summon anything to help your world. Inara's eyes widened. Only 500 years. Bye. Can I even develop my world enough, should I summon something? Inara hesitated. Summoning something that didn't come from her world could drastically change it. Sometimes, the result would be terrible. 1040 May 24, 2020 CE. 0820 Sun 24, 196 AE. Malian, Elven Nation. After having most of the elves that were with her stay at the outskirts of the town, Era and a few other elves walked into the town square. On her way there, the town was eerily quiet. She stopped and took in the scene in front of her. Standing besides her, the lieutenant turned his head to look at her. Major General, seems like we have units that got here before us. Two elves in officer uniforms were in the town square arguing. These are our supplies. No, ours. Elven soldiers were scattered around. A few scared town's elves stood by and watched. Era and the lieutenant approached them what's happening here. Both elves turned towards Era and said the same thing who are you? Major General Era Belra of the 11th Blitzpanzer Division. Beside me is Lieutenant Alark Valzana of the 10th Infantry Division. Who are you two? Captain Jandar Mararik of the 5th Tract Infantry Division. Major Ravine Jostina of the 33rd Infantry Division. Ravine stared at Era. Look here, we got here first so these supplies belong to us. Jandar chuckled. Well, tell that to my Magi track. A Magi track rolled into the town square. A soldier manned the machine gun on it. Era looked at Elark and whispered into his ear, Lieutenant, get it over here. Are you sure Major General? We can't use. Era cut him off. Yes, I'm sure. I'm. I guess I'm currently your commanding officer. I will take full responsibility for anything that happens. After Elark nodded and left, Era shook her head. Sheesh, he follows the rules too much. She turned back to the standoff. We will shoot. You won't dare. Era shouted. Stop. 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 Jandar and Ravine looked at her and said the same thing again. What? Look we are all soldiers of the elven nation here. We are part of the same army. Can't we share the supplies? Maybe we can even travel together as a single unit. Ravine stared at her. Between the three of us? Together? Jandar shook his head. I have a couple hundred elves of my unit with me. They are my unit and my unit only. We need those supplies. No, my unit need them. Era coughed. I outrank Bo. She got cut off by Jandar. Look here Missy, tell your rank to my Magi track. These supplies are mine. A vein popped on her forehead. Oh so you gentle elves want to have a who has the biggest dick contest. A rumbling noise came from behind her. Well then, tell that to my knight. A knight came from behind her and stopped in the town square. It turned its turret towards the Magi track. Era took a deep breath. Okay now, we will be sharing these supplies based on how many elves we have and what we need. Understood, gentle elves. Ravine and Jandar stared at each other and then looked back at Era and then looked at the knight. Okay, I guess. Fifteen minutes later. Era, Jandar, and Ravine were sitting in someone's house conversing. Era looked at Jandar. Okay so since you have Magi tracks and I have Magi Panzers, we will be splitting the fuel. I'm taking 60%. You are taking 40%. Jandar immediately protested. Hey, that's not fair. My knight needs more fuel than your Magi track. I'm already being lenient here. Jandar looked away. All right. Okay and that should cover almost everything. I hope you two have a good day. Elven Underground Command Complex, Elven Nation. Terran, with a frown on his face, approached his aides. The aides, who have been busy with compiling reports and various other tasks, all stopped and nervously stared at Terran. Terran looked around. We are leaving. If he really betrayed us, I won't be surprised if he tells the humans where we are located. Spread the word. Take as much supplies as you can. Forty minutes later. Outside the complex, 
Colonel General Vudun Roque looked at Terran. My leader, we have nearly completed evacuations. Where will we go from here? Terran smiled. Where our ancestors have called their home. Chapter 85, Warlord, Opposition, and Resistance. 0310 May 26, 2020 CE. 0435 Sun 26, 196 AE. Ovigrith, Elven Nation. Although it has been reduced for the past few days, the tension between the surviving elves in the city and the human soldiers still ran high. Finn yawned as he stood on the busy street watching the elves walk by. Beside him, Blake and Curtis were laughing about some joke. Finn was glad to see Curtis doing fine. Finn started to yawn again but stopped as he heard gunshots. Shit. The crowd of elven civilians started screaming and running. What is going on out there? Shit. There's an elf shooting some magic at us. Finn, Curtis, and Blake ran towards the noise. The gunshots died down just as they arrived on scene. A clearly dead elf laid on the ground a yard or so away from US soldiers. He's down. Blake looked around. Fuck. What was that? Anybody injured? A US soldier laid on the ground. A medic was working on him. The downed soldier coughed. Shit. I'm fine. Just a bit shook up. The medic patted the soldier's back it didn't even get through your vest. Just throwing stones at us with magic. He bent down and picked up one of the projectiles. It was just a small stone. Thank God most of these civvies have weak magic. That water guy last week was nasty. Finn walked towards the group of soldiers. Heard he injured two guys. He was a soldier that we didn't net when we swept through the area. Blake shook his head. I really can't be comfortable with the fact that all these elves have weapons on them. Kurtz nodded. At least most of the elven civilians here are peaceful. Blake chuckled well, we kinda killed and imprisoned almost all of the non-peaceful ones. A few miles from the Galath mountain range, Colonel Brian Trujillo led Anphalen out to the field that had a black hawk waiting. Anphalen looked curiously at it. So these are helicopters. You know about helicopters. The advancement department was working on producing helicopters. They haven't made it yet though. Well, this is a Black Hawk. A transport helicopter. Probably the safest way of transport here. We will be sending you to the port city of Philinias. Our diplomat will meet you there. 0623 May 26, 2020 CE. 0611 Sun 26. 196 A. Port City of Philinias. Daniel felt a bit tired. He was a U.S. diplomat in the Magasian Imperium that was just given a bunch of information and rushed here. He entered the room. An elf was standing next to a seat. They shook hands. Nice to meet you. I'm diplomat Daniel Foley. Anphalen Inania Rose. Former head of the Elven Intelligence Department. Take a seat. I have been temporarily assigned by my government to meet with you. Of course, I hope you understand that we are not here for compromise. The current elven government must be completely dissolved and remade. Terran Van Harris will either be killed or if he survives, be tried for crimes against humanity. That is perfectly alright with me. As long as we remain a free race, we will not accept being ruled by humans. We are not here to conquer you. We will leave once a stable democratic elven government. I will help. Well, my government would like a lot of information from you. A few minutes later, Daniel walked beside Anna Falen. It is highly likely that you would be a target of assassination. I won't be surprised if they electrocute you or something. Electrocute? We don't have electricity magic. Well, that explains why I haven't heard anything about our soldiers getting struck by lightning magic or something. Does your country's intelligence not know this? Lightning magic doesn't exist. There are four main types of mana. Air, water, fire, and earth. I'm able to manipulate air mana quite well. It's not good at attacking but very good at defending against regular magic attacks. Well, we will still have guards with you. 0839 May 26, 2020 CE. 0719 Sun 26, 196 AE. Skies over the Elven Nation. A B-2 bomber cut through the sky. 
Its black paint glinted in the sunlight. The bay doors slowly opened up and a mop dropped. A few seconds later, a massive blast went off on the ground. An RQ-170 stealth drone circled around in the sky. Ronell watched the live footage from the Situation Room. Krilson nodded. That should be a good effect on target if the bunker is really there. The entrance is where he said it will be. Hopefully, we killed that Terran bastard. Inora, Elven Nation. An elf, holding a submachine gun, shouted. They have a knight with them? Get the Pam. Another elf ran up and aimed a Pam at the knight. The Magi rocket flew over the turret of the knight. The knight's turret turned towards the elf. O.N. Elves started throwing down their weapons and raising their hands towards the tank. We surrender? Don't shoot. A tied-up elf looked you are nothing more than traitors to the leader. Oh, Wyrenth. I doubt our leader is even alive anymore. Even if he was, he has abandoned us and proven himself incompetent. We may be traitors to the leader but we aren't traitors to our country. I'm proclaiming myself as the ruler of this town and the surrounding area. My reinforcements will come. Nasir, you will regret your betrayal. Ha! Huh? Reinforcements? What reinforcements? A chain of command doesn't exist anymore. It's everyone for themselves. For the past few days, I tried to receive orders and tried to request for supplies. But we were ignored. My elves were forced to scavenge just to survive. Look. I give you this chance to live. Most of your elves have agreed to serve me. How about you? If you swear your oath to me, we can create an empire. Never. Nasir nodded to the two elves flanking Wyrenth. Well, if that's your decision, take him away and deal with him. Fifty miles from the elven underground command complex. A platoon of elves held up their rifles at the sight of two elves approaching them. Halt. Identify yourselves. We are forward elements of the leader security company. The leader would like to meet with the current commander of your force. Which unit are you? We are the 11th Tracked Infantry Regiment. Ten minutes later, Colonel Goraz Balhorn saluted. My leader, Terran nodded. Colonel Balhorn, your orders, sir. We will be conducting a retreat to the Forest of Origin. I would like to give a short speech to your elves. Of course, sir. Terran stood in front of a thousand or so elves of the 11th Tracked Infantry. We will be fighting a war for the survival of all elves. These humans may have demons supporting them but do not fear. We are the mightest species on this planet. Through our righteousness and our will, we shall destroy these pests that infest this planet. We will make them run from our homes. We shall cleanse this world of them. We shall return to our ancestral land and show these humans that we are not defeated. Terran conversed with his general staff. Before destroying the large communication equipment, we sent out a message telling all units to regroup at the Forest of Origin. I'm not sure how many units were able to receive it though. Terran nodded. As long as we have a division of elves, we can still fight. Port City of Philonias. Anphalen stood in front of a crowd of elves. My fellow elves, I have made a deal with these humans. I understand why you want to call me a traitor but I'm an ally of all elves. What I seek for is the survival and freedom of the elven species. There were murmurs among the elves. Look at where we are now. We have no control of our country and humans are everywhere. I dream of a future where we will have control over our own country and these humans will be gone. Of course. You can continue fighting but I'm afraid we won't win. The humans have already taken the mountains. Our military is in disarray. And our leaders have fled. Two F-15s make sonic booms overhead. Like you, I have no intention of living under humans. The humans have offered me the fact that they don't want to control us either since they know we will resist every second of it. As long as we don't attack the humans, they will leave us alone. In a forest, Elven Nation. Era watched as her tank crew refueled the night. The crew popped open the doors on the back of the night. They removed the two massive Magi batteries that were attached. A long tube, the monosuction connector, connected the large Magi batteries with multiple smaller ones which was the fuel they got from the town. After checking that the connector was linked in the right direction, they turned the valve. 
Mana flowed from the smaller Magi battery to the bigger ones. Era wondered how much of the Magi batteries was left. Cities were the major producers of Magi batteries. The density of cities, in the millions, allowed Magi batteries to be easily fueled. With most cities bummed by the Americans, she doubted there would be enough. The night's consumption of mana was ridiculously high. To travel a few hundred miles, it required mana that was capable of powering a town for multiple days. If she had her men continuously refill the smaller Magi batteries, she doubted it would be enough. At this point, she regretted not pushing the idea to join forces. 1023 May 26, 2020 CE, Washington, D.C. Ronald sat back and listened to Krilson. We will be launching an assault on the elven capital city within 35 hours. The Air Force and artillery have pounded it for the last 10 days. According to General Thompson, resistance will still be heavy. We are expecting something like the Battle of Berlin. 39 hours later, of Valen, elven nation. Johns Abrams lurched to a stop. Fire. The stallion exploded as an Abrams shell went right through it. The Abrams machine guns opened up on the elven infantry defending the street. The ground started shaking. Whoa, what the fuck? Chapter 86, The Elves Fight On. 1444 May 27, 2020 CE. 1022 Sun 27, 196 A. Of Valen, Elven Nation. From far away, the explosions and orange glows could be heard and seen in the night skies of Afvalon. The fire control officer looked at the black and white video feed. We got an elven armored column down there. Goddamn, how well did they hide their armor? Seems like they crashed them into houses so they could be hidden. Well not like that matters much now. The 105mm on AC-130 circling the city opened up on the four elven knights below. We have what seems to be a company of elven infantry coming down that street. The 30mm autocannon made bright white dots on the screen of the thermal camera as rounds hit the elves below. The battle had been going on for a day and the elves were fighting tooth and nail for their capital city. 0123 May 28, 2020 CE. 0341 Sun 28, 196 AE. The shooting stopped as the ground shook violently. Bricks fell off of some of the three-story buildings. Jacob ducked and yelled at his squad, Get back into the Bradleys. The buildings are coming down. Isaac piled into the Bradley along with his squad. Why the fuck is there an earthquake? What's the chances of that? The Bradley shook violently. A metallic pang rang out as something hit the Bradley from the outside. Captain John Rose felt his entire body shake as the ground shook violently. This is second platoon. The river is overflowing. It's overflowing? How bad? The water in the river is rising up at unbelievable speeds. Shit. All tanks in second platoon back up. Shit. 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 Fuck. It's gushing towards us. Another voice came on the radio. Find the fastest route possible. The city is submerging. As the shaking stopped, some water started flowing down the street. John's tank started moving back. Even with the rising water, elves were shooting again. There's a tank to our left. The driver of the Bradley yelled back at Jacob. The water is getting too high. We have to abandon the Bradley or we will be swept away everyone get out. They have been trying to navigate the city in order to get out but weren't fast enough. Elves had also tried to stop the Bradley but were quickly dealt with by its 25mm chain gun. Fuck. We need to get on a building. Go. Isaac waded his way through the gushing water and followed his squad. Entering the house, there was already a few feet of water on the ground. They rushed up the deserted building. Jacob, Isaac, and the rest of the squad got onto the roof of the house through a window. The water was filling the street and rising. Their Bradley started floating away. A wave then engulfed it and turned it sideways. Jacob shook his head. Fucking hell. The elves must be up to some shit with their magic. Isaac looked over the roof and at the ground. Um, the water is still rising. We may need to find higher ground. The building beside us is a story or two higher. 
We should swim across when the water gets high enough. Isaac shook his head. The water is too violent and there are random waves. We can't swim across. Jacob nodded. I'm gonna try to get an evac for us. I have my squad with me. We need an evac here. We are stuck on a building on the east side of the city. Isaac couldn't hear what was being said on the other side of the radio but Jacob shouted. Ten minutes later. In the distance, a black helicopter got closer and closer. Isaac shouted. Our ride is here. Jacob looked at the edges of the roof. Jesus Christ. Get in the helicopter. Go, go, go. The water was splashing onto the sides of the roof of the building. The men piled into the Black Hawk. As the water started flowing onto the roof, the Black Hawk's wheels started lifting off the ground. The Black Hawk's rotors made waves onto the water. Suddenly, a wave of water started coming for them. There's a fucking wave incoming. Come on. Get us off the ground. The wave barely missed them as the Black Hawk gained altitude. Of Valen, Elven Nation. The capital city of the elves was once in a valley that had a river run through it. Now, it was just a massive lake. Debris floated around in the water and the structures that hadn't been swept away stuck out of the water. It was as if a hurricane just swept through. A few black hawks and chinooks flew over the flooded city. An F-15 flew by. In one of the black hawks, Isaac looked out. They fucking sacrificed an entire city, their capital just to kill a few of us. Jacob took in the view. Probably for their sense of pride or something. The elves' mentality doesn't differ that much from a human's. I guess. If we can't have it, you can't have it either. 0444 May 28, 2020 CE. 0522 Sun 28, 2020 CE. Washington DC. Ronell looked very stern. How many men did we lose? Krilson looked grim. A couple hundred were drowned. We lost five Abrams, two Bradley, and a couple of other vehicles. This was completely out of our expectations. Fucking magic bullshit. We have to look out for things like these in the future. I would like all units to stay about a mile away from rivers. We could ask the elven official that surrendered to us. He may know something. Port City of Philonias. Anphalen shook his head. I did not know that Terran had any plans to submerge the capital city. Daniel nodded. Can your entire country be submerged again? We aren't capable of submerging this country as of right now. We were able to submerge our country and keep it submerged because of the last great Magus. We surfaced our continent right when he died. The current great Magus doesn't have the power to submerge us or keep us submerged. The Great Magus with that amount of ability comes about once every few thousand years. Good to hear that we only have to deal with one of these bastards. Well, if the capital is gone, then the current Great Magus might be dead. With great amounts of mana, comes great physical weakness. So much mana in one elf is not good for their health. I don't believe that the current Great Magus could have moved out of there. I remember the successor of the current Great Magus wasn't that powerful. We were still trying to find a suitable replacement for him. Washington, D.C. Ronell was delighted to hear that the chances of another flooding incident happening wasn't likely. However, the stay away from Rivers Command was still in effect just in case. The President sat in the Situation Room for a briefing by General Thompson. We are seeing a general breakdown of order among their units. We have some units seemingly retreating in a similar southern direction. However we have many units that are holding their ground yet not covering anybody's retreat. There are some units moving in a completely unreasonable direction. According to military intelligence, it is highly likely that Terran Van Harris is dead. Forest of Origin, Elven Nation. Colonel General Vudun Roken took in the forest. I have never actually visited this place before. Terran looked around. Our ancestors ruled these forests during the days when we used bows and arrows. Well, not much is left of that time. The forest reclaimed it all when we ventured outwards. A few minutes later here's my plan. We will begin building a base in this forest. Multiple small spread out camps. Each with an independent yet still unified command. 
the Americans can easily destroy concentrated formations of us and find ways to tear apart our chain of command. This forest is perfect for ambushes. Their armor can't enter the forest. Terran nodded to Vuden's words. What will we do about our armor? We can't just abandon them outside the forest. Our armor has proven quite ineffective against theirs. At this point, they are just metal coffins. The Titan was killed without even putting up a fight. At most, we bring our stallions. The knights have some use. We can entrench them and make them into bunkers. We can even hide the few fortresses we have until the day we use them again. May 29th. Sun 29th. Galath Mountain Range. With elven forces in disarray, U.S. and Magasian forces easily crossed over the mountains. The scattered elven units that tried to hold their ground were easily pushed aside. Chapter 87, Crumbling Power, 0246 May 29, 2020 CE, 0423 Sun 29, 196 AE, on the other side of the Galath Mountain Range. Frontline, Nix Abrams came to a halt. We have elven soldiers right in front of us. Fire. The shell exploded on the ten or so elves on the hill. Some elves panically stood up with their weapons while others were frozen in shock. Suddenly they started shouting. We surrender. We surrender. Droves of elves put their hands up and laid down their weapons. Nix Abrams along with the rest of the platoon drove close to the surrendering elves and stopped. Connolly smiled huh, nice. Either their fighting spirit is gone or these are just a bunch of untrained conscripts. Nick stared at them through the slit of the commander's hatch. Well, look at them. Some of them seem to be starving. I guess their logistics fell apart. Infantry started arriving to secure the surrendering elves. Ten minutes later, an elf ran into a rundown building. There were many elves in the building but the messenger ran directly to one. Commander, human forces are here. Our forward observers have been defeated. The elf stood up. Our leader may have run away in fear of these measly humans but we will face them, elves, into positions. They will not take our city. Wu, our new leader. A shout came from outside. Human aircraft, get into cover. Explosions rumbled the ground. The elves dived for the ground and took cover under desks. A few minutes later, another messenger came in through the door. Commander, our forces are surrendering. Human tanks are here. Shooting and explosions could be heard outside. We are retreating. Get to the car. Somewhere in elven-held territory, elven nation. Sitting on the back of the turret of the moving knight, Alark scanned the sky. His head swished back and forth. There aren't that many human aircraft overhead anymore. Era, who was sitting in the opened commander's hatch, replied without looking back at Elark. We are just a Magi tank on the road. I don't think the humans will send aircraft just for us. There are probably larger groups moving towards where the leader is. Era turned her head towards the forest beside the road. A few elves could be seen. In reality, a hundred or so elves were in there. Something landed a few feet in front of her knight and exploded. Era lurched forward as her knight came to a sudden halt. Era quickly gathering herself, went back into the night and closed her hatch. Enemy Magi tank to our left, it's another night. The turret started moving. Elark slid off of the side of the tank and ran into the forest. Era looked through the slits of her hatch. Off in the distance, a knight had its gun aimed at her tank. Fire. Her Magitank shell hit the front sloped armor. First one bounced. Reload. Driver. Turn our tank towards the enemy. Another shot came from the enemy knight and flew over her knight. Fire. This time the shot went through the front and an explosion occurred. Era took a deep breath and let it out. She opened the hatch and looked out towards the destroyed knight in the grassy field. Alark was beside her in an instant. Are you all right Major General? Era's eyes widened at the voice of Alark. Oh, Alark, you spooked me there. I'm fine. Era turned her head to the forest. I need a squad over here. Check the enemy knight. An elf saluted as he approached her. Major General. The bodies are definitely elves. The surrounding area seems clear though. Era rubbed her head. 
We need to be more careful. We don't know who is friend or foe now. Alark and Era stood side by side while observing the destroyed tank. Era touched the hole that her knight made in it. Any idea which unit they are from? Alark shook his head. Based on the designation on it, it should be from the 88th Magi Panzer Division. However, the crew aren't wearing a tanker's uniform so they could be from another unit. Era frowned. Their shots are so bad, I don't think they are a part of the double eight unless they started conscripting random elves into their division. I don't think their pride could have taken it. Four hours later, Era awaited the response of the village chief. After swallowing, the village chief spoke. Sorry, Major General. We just restarted production after another group of soldiers took ours. We barely have enough to power our village. Such a measly amount can't power your vehicles. Era sighed and walked out of the building. Elark was standing outside. Era looked at Elark. We may have to abandon our night. 0845 May 29, 2020 CE, Washington, D.C. Ronell looked through the satellite images. We have spotted increased activity inside this large forest. It seems that a lot of surviving elven units are moving towards this location. Either a new leader has arisen or Terran isn't dead. Ronell groaned. I want this forest destroyed. Understood, Mr. President. 0833 May 30, 2020 CE. 0716 Sun 30, 196 AE. Forest of Origin, Elven Nation. Many elves were working on trenches that would crisscross the main base. A single elf came running towards them. We have reports of human aircraft. Get back into the bunkers. Our observers outside the forest have reported human aircraft. The humans seem to have found us, sir. General of the Infantry Ryo Mayahorn nodded. Of course, this was inevitable. Hopefully, they can't see through the forest canopy. Somewhere in the forest of origin. I seem to be living more underground now than up above. Terran laughed sadly as he drank. He was currently in a dimly lit room with Vudan. The room was part of a hastily constructed building dug into the ground. There was rapid knocking on the door of his room. Whoever was on the other side of the door shouted, My leader, we are under attack. Human aircraft are overhead. They have found us. Terran chuckled. There seems to be nowhere I can run to anymore. Vudun, who was sitting beside him, raised his glass. Well, we are with you till the end. Cheers. 1322 May 30th, 2020 CE, 0941 Sun 30th, 196 AE, Washington DC, how's the provisional government? Katerina smiled at Ronell's question. Well, Mr. Inania Rose has been setting some things up. They are already making a census and he has elves fixing basic services in the territories we have secured. We are going directly for a democracy after the war in this situation. I wonder how well the elves will adapt to it, having never experienced it. Well, we are there as a guiding hand. We can probably fix them the same way we fixed the Germans and Japanese after World War II. They are a nation-state unlike the Mach Imperium. Also, I heard the Bame Kingdom will be having their referendum soon. Ah, yes. That had been delayed until now because the process to strip the nobles of their titles has been complicated. The National Guard unit there has been doing quite a good job at keeping the nobles in check. The king already removed the personal armies of most of the nobles so that helped a lot. Ronell smiled. That's good to hear. Do we have a set day for the referendum? June 6. Less than two weeks from now. A bit of concern crossed his face on that. Agent Port. Bame Kingdom. Private Seth Campbell of the 116th Infantry Brigade Combat Team of the Virginia Army National Guard made a big yawn as he stood guard in the street. The sun had just started going down. His squad leader, Staff Sergeant Noah Gonzalez chuckled. Tired, Seth. Seth rubbed his eyes. Well, yeah, we just kicked another one of those nobles' asses yesterday. That should have been the last one. The referendum is gonna happen soon and if that goes well, we get to go home. I didn't think being a part of the National Guard would be this much. I thought we would help people out during natural disasters. 
Not shooting people trying to kill us with muskets. Ha. Huh. We are still soldiers. Not sure what you expected. National Guard units have been sent to fight wars since World War II or something. Well, at least you weren't here when we deployed to Iraq. I rather fight a bunch of 17th century soldiers with muskets than terrorists with axe and suicide vests. Well if you put it that way, I guess so. Chapter 88, The Inevitable. 0840 May 30, 2020 CE. 0720 Sun 30, 196 AE. Forest of Origin, Elven Nation. AA the guns, positioned in openings in the forest so that their shells didn't explode in the trees, fired into the air. This isn't working. They are too fast. The human planes zoomed by before the monoflak even exploded in the air. Mark 77 incendiary bombs dropped from the F-15 ES zooming overhead. The forest is on fire. We need to put it out. Sir, they are still bombing us. We can't go out. Anybody who has water abilities? We need you up here. But sir, we have to put out the fire before it spreads even further. Flames chewed through the forest and explosions rocked the ground. MacDill Air Force Base, Florida. General Abrams Thompson watched the drone footage that showed the damage done on the forest. The elves seem to have put the flames out quite fast. His aide snorted. They have water magic bullshit. Of course they put it out fast. Well, the president has given specific orders for that forest to be wiped off of the face of this planet. I want more strikes on that forest. Also divert 2B-52S on that. I want the place leveled. Carpet bomb it if you need to. 1722 May 30, 2020 CE. The Pentagon. In his office cubicle, Daniel Gretting looked at the report on his computer screen and muttered to himself. Hmm. Weird. These numbers seem to be incorrect. The past few reports were all three deaths from airstrikes. He scrolled through the report that detailed the latest numbers on civilian casualties. In the end, the information on these reports will have to be compiled into an overall report titled Annual Report on Civilian Casualties in Connection with United States Military Operations in 2020. Daniel looked at the time. He looked back down at his computer screen. He was just a civilian worker for the Department of Defense and it was nearly time for him to clock out. Rubbing his head, he turned off his computer and stood up. I will deal with this later. I get the feeling this is complicated shit that I got myself into. Of course it had to be fucking me to notice. 0250 May 31st, 2020 CE. 0425 Sun 31st, 196 AE. 87 miles from the forest of origin. The night started sputtering and suddenly stopped. Era looked down into the tank. Has the Magi batteries ran out of fuel? One of her crew members shouted back. I think so. It's not starting. Okay. Everyone get out. Era jumped off the side of the night and hit the ground. She turned around and looked at the night. The rest of the crew slid off the tank. Elark also slid off the side of the tank. Era looked at Elark. Well, I had hoped it would have gotten us to the forest of origin. I didn't want to steal from those civilians if I had known we would have had to abandon it. Elark cocked his head. In military law and rules of conduct, seizing materials from civilians in order to aid the war effort is legal and encouraged. Era sighed and shook her head. Are rules all you think about? Forest of origin. Terran listened intently to Vudun. According to reports from those who have recently arrived, there are multiple units who have defected. To the humans. No, my leader. It seems like they couldn't bear the humiliation of turning to the humans, so instead they have formed their own independent groups. Well, they will just be a bump in the road for the humans. As long as they don't attack us, they are free to do whatever they want. It's probably better since they are bogging down the human advance. Vudin stopped what he was saying. He wanted to warn Terran that he was losing his grip over the country and many had become disillusioned. Terran cocked his head. Colonel General. Oh, sorry. Was thinking if there was anything else. We do have reports of elves being attacked by other elves. Three days later. 
0506 June 3rd, 2020 CE, 0533 Sun 34th, 196 AE, explosions shook the ground, loose dirt fell from the ceiling and landed on Terran's map, he swept it off and sighed, they have been bombing for the last four days already, less than a mile away, Era stood in utter shock, the forest of origin looked almost unrecognizable. What was once a lush green forest had become grey charred wood and blackened dirt. What? Alark had a grim look on his face. The humans found out. Era gritted her teeth. Who goes there? Era and Alark pulled out their pistols while her de facto unit raised their rifles and submachine guns. They turned to face an elf approaching them. I'm Major General Era Balra of the 11th Blitzpanzer Division. Who am I speaking to? The elf saluted. Private Rees Kegela of the Leader Security Company. Is the leader still alive? He is. We have set up a bunker system in the forest. Human aircraft have been bombarding us daily for the past four days but it's been holding up. I would like to meet with the leader. I will see what I can do. Are these elves from your division? No. These are just survivors that I gathered at random. I haven't bothered to check which unit they were from. 45 minutes later. Era entered the room and immediately saluted. My leader, Major General, I would like to commend you for safely guiding a hundred elves here. Just doing my duty, sir. Good to hear. May I inquire about our current situation? I have not been able to communicate with any form of command. Terran smiled at that. This is Colonel General Vudin Roken. He will update you on the current situation. Era gave a salute to Vudin. Vudin nodded. Let's take this conversation outside. There is much to inform you about. Ah, before you two go, I forgot something important. Congratulations, Major General Era Balra. I'm awarding you a two-rank promotion to General of the Magi Panzers. Also, so much has been happening for the past few days and this is far overdue but Colonel General Vudin Roken, you have been promoted to Field Marshal. I expect much from you too. General of the Magi Panzers Balra and Field Marshal Roken. They both saluted. Thank you, my leader. The Forest of Origin is currently the only place in our actual control. Everything else not controlled by humans is in our de jure control. We have been bombed daily and it's worsening. Truth to be told. Vudin stopped. Era eyed him. Vudin looked around and lowered his voice. Truth to be told. I don't think this war is currently in our favor. Our current government has lost legitimacy. I'm pretty sure you have been fired upon by other elves. I would actually suggest sir, negotiations with the humans. You know if you said that to most other elves, they would probably report you for treason. However, I agree with that. But with how you are saying it, I guess our leader isn't too keen on that idea. Vudun laughed. I'm a field marshal now and I'm currently quite close with Terran. He will believe my words more than anybody else. They exited the bunker. They were deeper in the forest and this portion wasn't as devastated as other parts of the forest. Vudun continued. I have been talking with a few other officers who also are thinking like me. But we don't want to do anything premature. Any orders then? Those 500 or so elves you led here have been assigned to you. We also have a couple hundred elves that will also be under your command. Not much but that will have to do. Which unit were you from, again? The 11th Blitzpanzer Division. I believe we have some survivors from your units. With Magi Panzers too. They will be assigned to you. Era smiled. I'm happy to hear. My elves are some hardy ones. Also, I don't need you to write up a report about what you faced during your retreat here. We have more important things to do. We have been building up defensive positions. Trenches, bunkers, and such. I will take you to the command center and give you the exact locations. An hour later, Era found Elark among the other elves she had left. Elark? I got promoted to General of the Magi Panzers. You are under my command now. Glad to hear that, General. Not sure if I'm allowed to do this but I'm giving you a 5 rank promotion. Congratulations Colonel Valzana. Om. Um, Era chuckled. Any higher you will be a general and I'm pretty sure I'm not allowed to do that. 
but I do need a second in command. You may follow the rules too much but you are probably the most suited. 0822 June 3rd, 2020 CE. 0711 Sun 34th, 196 A. White House. Krilson updated him on the current military situation. Most areas have fallen under our control. There has been limited and ineffective resistance from the elves. I believe we have broken them. Ronell frowned. Then why hasn't this war ended? It seems that the elves would rather become independent forces than surrender to us. We have witnessed elves fighting amongst themselves while still fighting us. Ronell frowned. Okay, what's next? Katrina. Katrina handed him a report titled Preparations for the First BAME Elections. We have the full list of candidates from the Electoral Committee. The BAME have around an 60% literacy rate so the candidates are using symbols to represent themselves. How's the security situation there? We have National Guardsmen posted at voting sites, protecting candidates, and patrolling settlements. Agent Port, BAME Kingdom. Seth stood guard at an election site and watched as people walked into the building. He spoke to Noah. So they are doing the presidential elections first. There are already a couple parties and quite a few independents on the ballot. They even have a monarchist party. Seth raised his eyebrows and groaned. What? Yes yeah, seriously, I don't really know their goal but I do hope they just want a figurehead. Well, there's something even worse. The nobles party. Oh come on. Guess what they want. Fuck off. Staff Sergeant. I don't want to hear any more. Noah laughed. Chapter 89, The Occupied Territories. 0848 June 3, 2020 CE. 0724 Sun 34, 196 AE. Agent Port, BAME Kingdom side by side, two BAME men wearing full skirted knee length coats, knee breeches, and a vest which seems straight out of 18th century Europe, walked by an electric light pole. Say, Glover, chap, I know they made us register for this and issued us ID cards but I have yet to be informed of how this voting works. Glover scratched his head. Have you not been reading the Age in Port Daily Journal, my old friend? It has a full description of how to do so. It also said that if we are confused, they will have people there to help us. Now, what I'm more concerned about is whether or not these Americans will rig this in their favor in order to have control of us. Now, now, why would they care about controlling us? Irvin, it is of most sense. Any normal country would want to control another country. That's just how the world works these days. Irvin waved around. Then they don't have to put such effort into doing this. They already have full control of our country. Look around us. We are basically an occupied nation. Both watched as an American soldier walked by holding his automatic rifle. Irvin continued. And besides, they have given us so much unlike the mock Imperium. They even created an electric company to give us electricity. Well, it is just a subsidiary of an American company and they haven't given everyone electricity. They still gave us electricity in the end. Better medicine, interesting products, and their food is great. I don't have anything to argue against that. They took their place at the end of the line that stretched outside the polling station. American soldiers were more present than on the streets but there were also some BAME soldiers who were armed with muskets. Walking into the polling station, they were greeted by a man dressed just like them sitting at a desk. He looked up at Irvin. Please present your ID card. Irvin showed it. Okay, please sign your name on this form. A few minutes later, Irvin found Glover as he walked out of the polling station. So, who did you vote for? Glover raised an eyebrow. Well, who did you vote for? A predicament indeed. How about we say it together? Sure. That's a terrific idea. I will count down. Ready? Glover nodded. Three, two, one. Irvin's words came out a second earlier. Milton Wareham of the BAME Democracy Party. Ned Hayes of the Unity Party. Why Ned Hayes? He's a bit too conservative there. Well, I like the status quo. Too much change doesn't suit me well. He isn't bringing much change to the laws from what I have read. We have a new system. We should have new laws to go along with it. 
It's only of most sense. Irvin, I never saw you as one of those revolutionaries. Oh, pish posh, Glover. Everything has changed. By any standards, the Democracy Party isn't revolutionary at all. If you want revolutionary, then look at the New World Party. 0812 June 5th, 2020 CE. 0706 Sun 36, 196 A. White House. Ronell looked through the report on the election results of the BAME presidential elections. Katrina was beside him. With 54% of the vote, Milton Wareham of the BAME Democracy Party won the presidential elections. Ronell nodded slowly as he read. What did they campaign on? Closer relations with us, improvements to civil rights, and support for free market capitalism seem to be their main focus. That sounds decent. There are other good options but much better than the Monarchist Restoration Party or the Nobles Party. Ronell looked up at Katrina. There's already a party that wants to restore the monarchy. They only had about 2% of the votes. We literally just got rid of the monarchy. Ronell shook his head. I want to have a meeting with Mr. Wareham as soon as possible. Katrina nodded. I will set that up. Also, when are the parliamentary elections occurring? We are hoping no more than six months from now but that isn't guaranteed. Well, at least we have someone up there running the country. Port City of Philonias. The port city of Philonias had become the temporary capital city of the new elven nation. Of course with if Valen becoming a massive lake, the port city could actually become the permanent capital. Anfalen sat at the desk of his office in the presidential building. The Americans had made him interim president. He looked through the papers stacked on his desk, reporting everything ranging from the food situation in every city to the appointment of new officials. Anfalen was glad to see that rebuilding efforts had already begun in multiple cities albeit slowly. They had just gotten the power back on in this city. He looked at one of the reports and sighed. The main problem was how hostile most elves were to the humans. The Americans were already on his skin about the situation. There were those who just didn't care about the humans. But quite a lot ranged from skeptical to outright suicidally hostile. It was going to take a lot of work to change the hearts and minds of the population after living so long under a regime with the main goal of teaching everyone to hate humans. Right now he was placating the population using the promise that once they established this new government, the humans would be gone. Anfalen feared that once he wasn't president anymore, a dumb zealot in his place would launch another idiotic war against the humans again. Another concern right now was the loss of population. Some cities lost 50% of their population due to the war. It was estimated that by the end of the war, 25% to 50% of the elven population would have died. Recovery might take decades. He got on his phone and called up an aide. He had to deal with the short-term problems right now and worry about the long-term ones later. The aide entered the room. Send the Magi battery engineers we have in this city to the port city of Illyserie. We need to get power back as soon as possible in every city. In the streets of the port city of Philonias. Everyone kept a wide distance from the human soldier. Some stared at him hostily. Erasn Kinryath walked briskly to the food market in order to get out of the tense atmosphere. With current infrastructure in tatters, much of the food here came from relief aid from the humans, more specifically the Americans. Some avoided it but she relatively didn't care as long as it kept her fed. As she looked through the selection of vegetables, a human military vehicle colored in various shades of green drove past her. Someone threw a rock at it but missed and it kept going. Getting her groceries, she got back home in a few minutes. She turned on the lights. The power had just come back on a few days ago and she was thankful for it. She was thankful for a lot of things. The fact that she survived, that the humans' occupiers weren't being hostile, and that things were actually going back to normal. 0912 June 5, 2020 CE. 0755 Sun 36, 196 AE. Forest of Origin. 2B-52S cruised through the skies in formation. The bomb bay doors of both B-52S opened up. Bombs started dropping in a slow pace. 
the forest below started exploding. An elven officer shook his head. They completely destroyed a portion of the forest. Everything is gone. The entire defensive network, a hundred or so elves are all gone. They are seeking to completely destroy us all. What do we do, Field Marshal? We have nowhere else to run. They are shooting at us like fish in a barrel. We only have one option left. I don't like it but we won't survive if we continue. Subican Kingdom, so in a continent. Well, King Ferdinand, what do you have to say for yourself? Velo's lioness figure loomed over the king who was clearly trembling in fear. Commander Flametail, I was forced to do this. I had to do this to save my people. The situation was hopeless. They came at us with tanks and guns. You have to understand. Velo snorted and turned to walk away. You threw yourself at their feet the moment they arrived and offered your full collaboration. You sent your own army to fight us. No matter how much I would like to kill you right now, the council will deal with you. Knights, take him away. Ron quickly followed after her. Jeb and Ahab also started to take their leave. Behind them, the king struggled. What are you doing? I'm the king of this nation. Get your hands off of me. Velo turned and glared at him. Or, I could tell the council an accident happened and a sword accidentally found its way cleaved into your head. I'm pretty sure the council will understand. The king emitted an eep and went quiet. Ahab walked beside Velo. The elves are pretty much broken at this point. Quite a lot of the occupied nations have declared their liberation. I wonder if you guys even need our services anymore. Velo nodded. That's up to the council. And your contract hasn't ended yet. We still have some resisting elements to sweep up. Ahab chuckled. The resisting elves have no armored support anymore and barely have any ammo left. My country has nearly conquered the elves' homeland. Well, it still feels nice to kick their ass. Chapter 90, The Plan to End It All 0844 June 7, 2020 CE 0722 Sun 38, 196 AE Forest of Origin Era sat down across from Vudun. She looked around. I hope the messenger gets there in time. He probably won't. We will have to leave before this place is completely burned and bombed to the ground. We can trust the messenger right. Navar's actually a very close friend. I trust him with my life. Era nodded. Now, how are we going to leave without Terran catching wind of us doing so? We don't. Even he will know when we need to relocate from a position. We will be leaving with him? How are we supposed to surrender to the humans then? He will most definitely stop us. Oh, you don't have to worry about that. I have been keeping an eye on who's the most loyal to him and who's having doubts. I will give you the plan soon. Are you sure the humans will treat us well? I'm gambling on it. We are really short on time. I wanted to ask for pardons first before we gave them the information but that will take too long. Anphalen seemed to have defected to the humans so we may have a chance. 0929 June 7, 2020 CE. 0744 Sun 38, 196 AE. White House. Ronell checked his appearance as he sat in front of a screen. He looked back down at a dossier given to him by the National Security Council. It was packed with information about Milton Wareham. Beside him, a translator fluent in Latin stood. The screen then flickered on. On the screen, Ronell could see the American ambassador to the Bain Republic. The ambassador turned his back and nodded to someone behind him. The ambassador's face left the screen to show another person sitting at a desk. He had a bushy white mustache and was a bit rotund. He had a friendly look. He was wearing black knee-length coat and a powdered wig. There was a translator beside him. Ronell smiled. Congratulations. President Wareham, I hope to see your administration create the first democracy of this world. Thank you, President Hayes. My administration shall do the best it can. That's good to hear. I want to know if there's anything on your agenda or any help we can offer. The BAME Republic is interested in continued cooperation with the United States of America. I hope your country reciprocates this interest. Of course. Of course. 
We will do whatever we can in developing a stable democracy in the BAME Republic. The thing that worries me the most right now is the discontent from formal nobles. I fear they may be plotting a way to take back power. I abhor the nobles' party and I'm currently debating on banning them. Outlawing a political party would set a dangerous precedent. Unless they directly act or there is proof of collaboration with violent entities, I would not recommend banning them. A stable democracy should accept other political ideologies and movements. However, there will be American soldiers on the ground in your country to keep the peace. We are hoping to establish an indefinite military base on your territory. My country will gladly welcome that. Although that may depend on the parliament once it's established. Well, we will continue operating the current airfields in your country in order to support the war against the elves. Once the war is over and the situation in your country is stable, there will be a scaling down of troops. However, we will base soldiers in the military base we establish. Most likely 10,000 or so, maybe even more. After a few more minutes, the video call ended. It was more of a simple courtesy call but Ronell felt that it got much accomplished. Seems like a good man. We can work with this. Katrina nodded. Well, we can only truly know from his actions. But I think things will go smoothly. 1025 June 7, 2020 CE. 0812 Sun 38, 196 AE. Forest of origin. Human aircraft zipped through the sky dropping more and more bombs. Even with the size of the forest, the elves were taking heavy casualties. The humans were slowly demolishing every square inch of the forest. The only thing the elves could do was sit in their bunkers and hope they won't blow up. What they feared most was when two gigantic aircraft flew over. Those dropped gigantic loads of bombs capable of reducing a couple square miles to charred wasteland. Vudin entered into the room where Terran was in. My leader, we need to disperse. This forest is no longer safe. We have lost too much elves trying to hold this position without even doing damage to the humans. The few anti-air that guns we had are all gone. Startled, Terran looked towards Vudun. A bit of dirt fell from the roof of the ceiling. And how do you recommend doing this dispersion? We have nowhere to go. We spent so much energy building all of this. It's no use. It's slowly getting destroyed. We shouldn't have regrouped here. We will split into multiple companies spread out across this countryside. Less effective, true, but we won't be sitting ducks. Vudin pulls out a small map from a case and sets it on the table. This is how I have our units spread out. My leader, you will be with your security company and will be in a safe location away from the fighting. White House. Ronell looked at the people in his office. A military aide seems to be the one giving information. What is this urgent report about? An elven soldier approached our forces about 10 minutes ago claiming to be a messenger for an elven field marshal. He gave us a letter from said field marshal. What did it say? Here's a digital copy. He hands Ronell a tablet. Basically, the writer introduces himself as field marshal Roken and is currently with Terran in the forest that we are currently bombing. So that bastard is still alive. Military intelligence told me he was dead. God damn it. This field marshal is claiming that he and many other elven military officials are contemplating surrendering. He claims that Terran would never agree to it so he created a plan to end this war. He will disperse the elven military outside the forest. Some of them will be surrendering while the others we can wipe out. He's also asking for him, the other surrendering officials, and their men to be pardoned. How are we going to know where they are then? We haven't received it yet but he gave us a map of where all the units he planned will be. It has units marked that are going to surrender and those that aren't. We even know where Terran will be in about two days. Terran will have a security company with him and most likely a couple of tanks. Ronell read through the message. This could be a trap. True, but we can have drones recon the area to see if it is. If it isn't, we can end this war. Has someone sent this to Anfalen? For confirmation about this Roken fellow, we are being cautious at who we give this information to. The only people who know about this on our side are the commanding officer who read this and everyone in this room. 
although I can get someone to talk to him about whether or not he has heard of Field Marshal Roken. Okay, so Anne Fallen has heard of him, but he was a Colonel General. I guess he was recently promoted. Glad we can confirm that. Now just to see if the information that was given to us was correct. I want special forces on standby to capture Terran if we find him. Mr. President, the Elven Messenger is requesting a response to send back to the Field Marshal. Let me write a response to thank them. I will guarantee to pardon them if the information is true. Pentagon. Daniel looked through the reports. He scrolled through past ones. He started muttering. Something's not right, someone's trying to hide something. All he wanted to do was to ignore this because he knew this would involve a lot of shit that he wasn't going to be happy to go through. But his dim conscience was screaming at him to do something. He needed to talk to someone. About five hours later, in a cafe, Daniel sipped on a coffee as he waited for his friend. It didn't take long for his buddy from the same agency of the Dodd. Charles, how has your day been? Heard you got a promotion. Congratulations. Charles sat down and smiled. Thank you, I have been doing well. How are you Daniel? This is unusual. We usually don't meet right after work. Well, there's a reason I called you here today. Do you want to get something to drink or eat before we talk about it? Charles shook his head. Daniel gave a quick look around and lowered his voice. I think someone is messing with the civilian casualty reports. Some of the data I was looking through seemed suspicious. Something flashed over Charles's face before going back to normal. Daniel guessed it was probably shock from what he was telling him. What is it? What do you mean by suspicious? Some of the data seems to be repeating. It's as if someone is trying to hide something. Charles kept silent. Daniel continued. For all I know, the president could be trying to hide things from Congress. And that is way above my pay grade. I don't want to play the hero but this is some serious stuff. I'm not sure what to do and who to report this to. Then maybe you shouldn't. We don't know who is trying to change the data. It could ruin your life. Someone up there could try to get rid of you. Daniel sighed. I just don't know.